Okay, so what I'd like to show you in this uh, video is how to correct some errors. Every now and then when you're sketching and doing some modeling and you change some of the geometry that's associated with your feature manager design tree, or your feature manager over here, and if you remember, everything is history based. So every time you add a sketch in here and add a feature and add, add another feature beyond that, it uh, puts it in order in your feature manager tree. So, and if uh, as you're adding stuff to the tree, let's say we were to put in uh, two additional blocks in here uh, attached to the original uh, brass hinge plate that we've been using for a while, uh, and then we erase the one that came before that, or maybe change the geometry and add a little bit, uh, the, the feature that came after that and the sketch associated with that may not like it. It sometimes creates a dangling relationship. So let's so go ahead and try to see if we can replicate that. So let's go ahead and start uh, with that uh, surface. Let's go ahead and sketch something out. And uh, we're going to do a corner rectangle, sketch that out, and we're going to grab that midpoint relation. So we're going to right click on that, select midpoint, right click on this with the control key to press right on that edge. We're going to make a midpoint relation between those. So now we know that if we stretch that out, uh, it didn't look like it took. So let's try that again. Let's make sure we select that line in here. And we're going to go to select midpoint. I think that's probably what we didn't do last time. And with the cold control key to press, we're going to go ahead and select that edge. Now we're going to do midpoint. So now it's right there in the middle. We're going to put in some arbitrary dimensions in here. So whatever that's closest to, we're going to make that maybe one and a half. And we're going to make this one maybe uh, maybe about three inches. Then we're going to do extruded boss space. So remember, you don't necessarily have to close out the sketch in order to complete this. All you have to do is go up here to features, go to extruded boss space, and then we're going to pull that up. And here's that arrow we could use. We can pull that up to a specific value, maybe 1.2. And we saw that on the scale over here, but we could also finish it up over here. Let's say we want to make that maybe just one inch. Then we're going to go to the green check mark. So now we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to go ahead and sketch on that. It's similar, but it's also different. We can go ahead and pick up that midpoint relationship too, by the way, as a starting point for another feature. So we're going to go ahead and pick up uh, maybe something like that. And over here, we're going to do a coincident relationship. And we're going to put some dimensions on this. So we're going to make this one maybe, oh, it uh, says we're, it's already driven. So let's look at, uh, see what we're doing here. If we look at our sketch over here, we have a blue line and three black lines. That blue line means that we can, I'm going to go ahead and escape a couple times to get out of that. We have the ability to move that uh, line around and uh, we need to put a dimension on. But these lines over here, these black lines are fully defined because of that midpoint relationship and then the coincident relationship over here along, as long as uh, as well as the vertical relation and the horizontal relationship too. So instead of putting a dimension on this, we're going to put a dimension on this and that'll lock it into place. So we're going to make that about one inch. And this too, we're going to go ahead and make uh, an extrude feature and we're going to make that maybe half an inch. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to change some of the geometry on this one, on our Boss Extrude 2. So we're going to come down here, go to Sketch 3. We're going to go ahead and edit that sketch. And we're going to take some elements out of that. We're going to take this line out of that, and maybe this line too. And now it's saying with that, uh, with that uh, a dialogue that it had in there, well, we could do the same thing here too. That, it's, uh, that we're changing the geometry in this, and there are features that follow that. Do we want to continue? And the answer is going to be yes. So we're going to go ahead and uh, sketch this out again and do something a little bit different. We're going to make that a little bit different. You notice as I bring this cursor over, dragging it over, I'm going to automatically pick up that horizontal sketch relation. Then when you get to a point up here, you'll notice that we have a uh, dashed line. That's suggesting that if we drop it there, we can that the line is going to be temporarily lined up with that point down here. And when we do that, we can establish a vertical relationship on that, and now that's ready to go. So we saw the same feature in the background. We're just changing the sketch a little bit. And now we're going to put a dimension on this, make that maybe two inches. And then we're going to rebuild it. And uh-oh, something isn't right here. We have a kind of a caution sign over here in the triangle. And let's see what's, what we can do about that. If we were to click on that sketch, uh, you can see a, uh, a warning kind of off to the side if you were to right click on that sketch and rebuild it or uh, ask it to uh, edit that sketch. And just before we do that, we also have a dialog box over here. So it says that uh, this sketch contains dimensions or relations to model geometry which no longer ex exist. So we can come in here and we can delete the dangling dimension which there is or we can edit the model to restore the missing uh, model geometry. So you see that a lot.
But there's a way to fix that that's uh, fairly easy. You just have to think about what we're doing here. So we're going to go back into Edit Sketch. If you look at this, it looks like everything else is okay in regard to the dimensions and the lines that are on this. But this over here, if we remember, we selected that point that was originally part of that block over here. That point now is kind of a kind of a brown color. I think uh, that's how it works. It calls it goldenrod, so it's kind of a dark orange. And you notice the sketch relation that we had in here, uh, which is a coincident relationship, uh, can be deleted. So we can get it. it's uh, also brown, also goldenrod. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And we're going to delete that. So notice everything's black. It kind of looks like it's fully defined, except for that sketch relation over here. If we take that sketch relationship out, then some of the lines are going to turn blue again. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take that sketch relation out. And now this line is going to be blue. And we could do a couple different things. We could take that line and make it collinear with this line over here. We could take this point and make it uh, coincident with that point over here, like it was originally when that block was three inches rather than two. Or you could put a dimension on it. We can go between that edge over here and maybe that line and maybe retain the geometry on top. Maybe make it three quarters of an inch. If you do that and rebuild it, it should be back in place and that gets rid of our error. So that is a dangling relationship. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add, uh, kind of uh, take out a dangling uh, dimension and I'm going to show you how to fix that too in a similar way. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about dangling relationships here. So we have three features. We have our base feature here. We have our extrude 2, which is that block that's coming up, and then our uh, boss ex extrude 3, which is this one on top of that. What we're going to do is we're going to take that box uh, 2, that uh, extrude 2 that we have in here, we're going to change that a bit. So we want to go ahead and edit the sketch. One thing I like to do about a lot of these videos is kind of show you some tips and tricks along the way that you may not see otherwise. So when I kind of go in these little digressions here off the topic, uh, it's kind of repeats a lot of things that we talk about in class, maybe in some other videos, but uh, you get a, a pretty good feel of how some of these models uh, come together. I'm not just going to show you one way of doing it. I'm going to show you a couple different ways of doing it and let you decide ultimately what works best for you in the situation you might be in. So we're going to go to our Boss Extrude 2, and we can do this one of two ways. We can open that up and go to the sketch and edit it. We can right-click on the Boss Extrude feature and edit the sketch that way. We can go over here to the modeling area and pick a surface that's uh, specific to that, uh, that uh, feature, and right-click over there and edit the sketch too. So here's uh, something. It's called the Selection Box. And if you were to take your uh, cursor and select everything, once you plant the cursor down and pull a box, a blue box, everything that's inside that box is going to get selected. So we're going to select just this line. So if I drop that box in here, everything that's inside that box gets selected. But if I go from the right to the left, everything inside that box will get selected, plus those things that cross the box. So look at this line down here, that's going to be selected. But because that line, or A line, is going to be crossing that line over here and this line over here, those are going to get selected too. So you notice we have three lines selected. Just a quick side. Selection box, left to the right, select some things. Everything inside that box gets selected. From the right to the left, everything that crosses that box and inside that box gets selected. Okay, so basically we're just going to select everything and uh, delete it. So now we have a kind of a preview of a rectangle that used to be there, but it's not. And we're going to replace that with a circle. So let's go ahead and go normal too. Let's go to our view uh, and uh, go to normal too. And we're going to sketch a circle out here. And we're going to take that circle uh, with a go escape a couple times to get us out of the properties manager. We're going to select that circle, select on that edge, and we're going to make those tangent to each other. It's the only uh, sketch selection or relation that we could actually choose that actually works. Then we're, then we're going to go ahead and try to uh, center this circle. So we could you know, make this point and that point. We could select that and we can make those vertical to each other. So yet there's another sketch relation we could do. So we're going to go ahead and uh, go to the origin. That point in the center of the circle. We can make that vertical. Puts that into place. If we were to delete one of those uh, relation uh, symbols, it deletes the other one too. Another way of doing this is to take a point, put it on that circle, and take this point and put it on that line and select midpoint. So now it's right there in the middle too. So two ways of doing that. We're going to smart dimension this thing. We're going to make that about two inches. Actually, I wish to make it 1.75. 
That way it's not right on the origin. And if we were to go ahead and rebuild this and kind of take a look at the sideways, you could see that we have a dangling uh, relationship in here, a dangling dimension. Doesn't like it. So if we go to the feature manager and take a look at this and open that up, you can see the sketch has got a uh, you know an alert on it, and it tells us what's wrong with it. That the sketch contains dimensions or relations to model geometry, which no longer exists. So it's given us suggestions what we could do to remedy that, and that's what we're going to do right now. So let's go ahead and click on the surface, and let's go ahead and make that normal too. If we uh, just uh, click on it itself, you can also see the normal view button over here as part of the shortcut next to the cursor. We're going to make that normal to the screen so we can see the sketch a little bit better, so we can see the sketch straight on. So sketch 4, we're going to right click on that, we're going to edit that sketch. And now right away you can see we have a dangling dimension, and we have a dangling uh, coincident re or midpoint relationship over here. And we have this line over here which is also dangling, and I believe that line is probably referencing that dimension. So if we were to take that dimension and correct it, that line is going to correct too. So all these are goldenrod colors, and we're going to go ahead and make those corrections. So here's one way to do it. A little bit shorter, because all you have to do is drag something. If you're ready to click on that dimension, you notice you have a red dot over here for the part of the dimension that's dangling. Over here it's green, as it should be, so we could take that red dot and move that somewhere. So we're going to go ahead and uh, drop it in that circle. So if you look at the, you know, the icons that are next to the cursor, you'll notice that one looks like a line, the other one's got a preview of a coincident relationship. Let's go ahead and drop that in there. You notice that the dimension now is fully defined and it's not dangling anymore. There's one more thing we could show you about that dimension. If we were to click on that dimension, we have the capacity. Let's say we don't really want it on that side of the circle. We want it on this side of the circle or the center. We could do that too. So if you click on that, it gives us a properties manager. There's a leaders tab up here. We can scroll down and pick center, minimum, which is what we had before, or close to it. We had a three quarters of an inch over there. Or we could do maximum, which is what we're trying to change it from. So let's go ahead and do minimum. We'll keep that 7 eighths of an inch dimension. So just click in the model in there and it takes care of that. So that black, that uh, goldenrod line over here on the right hand side, that gets corrected when that dimension got corrected. So the last thing over here is a midpoint relationship uh, that we had in that rectangle over here. So what we could do is we can click on that point over here and again we got that red dot. We can take that and really establish it. Now it's going to try to continue to maintain that midpoint relationship. So if we drag that over here bang midpoint over here may not be exactly what we want in fact I think we'd probably prefer to have that down here but it does uh, maintain that uh, midpoint relationship and if we want to get rid of that we could just delete uh, click on it and delete it and maybe bring that back down here so if we're going to take that point and maybe park it on that line over here we can establish a coincident relationship and to find this blue portion of that rectangle in the manner that we see fit, we could put a dimension on it. We can establish a relationship with the middle of the circle, perhaps. It's not going to let us do that. Or we can establish a uh, relationship, perhaps, with the circle itself, or the edge of that um, feature that is created from that circle, and maybe make that tangent or coincident, and that could work too. So again, that point, edge of that circle, let's try to make it coincident. And there it is. So now it's coincident on it. It's not going to let us do tangent. Tangent will allow us to do a line between a line and a circle, but not a point, because you can't make a tangent relationship between a point and that circle. But coincident works, fully defined. And now if we rebuild the model, all of our errors have disappeared. So those are the dangling relationships and how you can get rid of them. Typically it's a dangling, a coin, a dangling a sketch relations or a dangling dimension, and that's how you can fix them.